Alright, well, quick preface to this video, I guess you could say I don't do many TV videos because I only have so many TVs, and if I did any TV videos, I'd be going over the same same sets over and over again. Um, I'm not like Shango 066 where you see me find all these sets on the side of the street and do all these resurrection videos. It's hard to find street finds here as it is. Um, the only real good place to look for sets is on eBay. Um, and I was looking on eBay and I found this, uh, it was for bids. No one else was bidding on it and I bid on it. It's a rare, I'm guessing it's a rare because usually these sets you don't very often come by them. It's a Marconi Canadian made uh, portable, I believe it's a vacuum tube set, I'm not sure. It's a transistor or what I asked this, I asked the seller. Uh, the seller goes by the name of, let's see here. Cool Caddy, Incorpor cool Caddy Incorporated, and uh, has a bunch of antiques for sale, a bunch of vintage, cool, real, real cool items, and uh, this is one of them. It was up for bids. I think it was at $115 Canadian. I thought it was like 123 or something, and ended up winning the bid because no one else bid on it. I thought it'd make a good, I thought it'd make an interesting TV video, and I thought it'd be cool to have this because these are, these sets are rare. These, I don't see very many of the Mar Canadian made Marconi ones. I don't think I've seen a Marconi set that looks like this. Well. Underneath all that uh, bubble wrap. Look what we got. It's a rare. I believe it's rare. I don't see a model number on it so far. Marconi Canadian made set. I don't know if it's a vacuum tube set or a. Uh, uh, transistor set. It looks old enough to be a vacuum tube set. But the headphone jack on this side uh, kind of is. The headphone jack on this side tells me that this could be a transistor set. You don't see a lot of those on vacuum sets. To me, anyways, it seems like that could be a... I don't see... looks like I see a high voltage cage, so this could very well be a vacuum tube set. This could very well be a vacuum tube set, because it looks like I see a high voltage cage. See the CRT in the back, the, the neck of the CRT. Um, very cool set. Canadian Marconi Company, made in Canada. Let me get this on the workbench. Um, there's the horizontal hold. Uh, there's ATC, vertical size, vertical linear. Let me get this on the workbench and give you a better look at it. Alright, we got it out on the workbench. Oh, and by the way, one way you can tell this set is very... Canadian is the sticker on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Very Canadian. Made in Canada. I don't see a date anywhere on this set. Model 188P11. Alright, let's plug this in and see if this thing powers up. I think it does. Uh, the seller, I believe it does. The seller showed a picture of it with a raster on it, a full, pretty bright looking raster. So, plugged in and Okay, so the slow warm up like that would suggest that this is a tube set, a vacuum tube set. Yeah. Yeah, this is a vacuum tube set. Brightness. 
this brightness. It's hard to see because I have a, uh, and the camera might be blanking out, but that's because of the frame rate. And I got my 500 watt construction light on, construction lamp on. So that makes it a little bit harder to see. Let's see if we get let the aerial here. Let's see if we get channel six uh, FM interference. Just to be channel five analog here on uh, CBC CBXT TV on the uh, CBC tower that I live in, all the way from used to be the CBC on analog. All right, and fine tune. So this is that's your channel plunker. And then the outer ring here is fine tuning. All right, so the set works. I can't really. I'm not out of good. The antenna's not out of good. I don't think it pivots either. I think it does. Oh yeah. Yeah, it pivots. Actually, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Very cool. Channel 11. That used to be an old analog station here. 12, 13, that used to be ITV. And that's, uh, just I wonder why they left that when they manufactured this. I wonder what that was for, the purpose of that was. I guess that that's if you wanted to add a UHF tuner, right? And this channel 4. I'm not getting any interference from my set up in my room in the house. That's where I'll bring this in and we'll hook a signal up to it. I kind of chuckled when I look at this. Another thing I wanted to mention, when you look at the back of the set, a Canadian set, and you see the Roberts Robertson screws, the square screws, <laughs> you know that's Canadian. I think that was invented here, Roberts. Well, I got the back, well, I got the back cover off, and look at this. This is a vacuum tube set in all original tubes, I believe. All original Marconi uh, RCA, uh, RCA on the Marconi branding, uh, I think mostly here in Canada. Alright, so let's check the CRT, I got my B and K model 465 CRT tester from 1965. So that would suggest, because uh, this, is, this CRT is an 11 DP4, and it shows it here in this uh, check chart. So that would, Suggest that this set was made from anywhere from the mid to late 60s. I'm going to be very careful taking these tops off. Actually, you should use a flathead screwdriver and slowly wiggle it. You don't want to break any tubes because, especially if it's at all original, it's never been touched. A lot of the things in here could be very brittle. And in the condition it's in, work fully working condition like that for all original tubes and everything is. Something you don't want to destroy. So, that's the right one yet. Type B. So put that on there. The CRT definitely does look um, high hour. The brightness wasn't all, it didn't seem too awfully bright to me when I powered it up. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and see here. I don't know if I can... I may have to do it, I'll probably have to do it this way, yeah. So you can see it on the camera. Uh, so, let me get the setup chart here. And then, speed voltage is 6.3, so your adjustment. It's a little on the high side. This isn't. It's a little excessive. I don't want to be driving it that much. Okay, I got filament. Ooh. I'm not even full heater voltage. I'm full heater voltage. And it's reading full emissions. 
I did that with my Filco Predicta on the 17 DRP4, so I'm wondering if something, maybe something's up with this tester. That maybe seems, reading off the charts like that, kind of seems a little excessive, but who knows. I'm not right at six, I'm not at, right at the uh, correct heater voltage, because if I go, I don't want to go any higher and write this CRT. I don't want to. be like rejuvenating it. Okay, that was kind of dumb of me. I'm going to try that again. I forgot to, uh, you might have noticed I had this, the G2 all the way up. That's for the, uh, when I tested the Predicta. These Filco Predicta, the 17 DRP4 calls for the G2 to be all the way up at 300. <laughs> and I put the G2 all the way up at 300. It's probably not very safe on a CRT that only uses 50 volts for the G2. So, um, I still got filament. Well, not now, because I don't have the CRT tester on. Well, let me try this again. See if we can get the correct measurement at the correct G2 voltage. I, I thought reading off the charts like that was a little excessive. Um, and the G1 range. With black and white sets, of course, you don't, you don't set the G1 range until you switch it to cutoff. So, heater adjustment. Where am I at? will be coming up. Whoop, that's a little excessive. I'm gonna keep it down there. Seems good enough. Something's up with this dial. This is supposed to. So I'm supposed to be able to move it to six six point three. It's very stiff. Either that or it's just I don't know. Something's up with the heater adjustment control down here. But um. I'll leave it there. And I'll check the emissions. It's reading out to the Okay, so we got a good that's pretty good for an original in CRT, so I guess that was correct. Although I had the G2 up all the way. Which I probably shouldn't have. And no shorts. Oop. I saw the H. Um H flickered there for a minute. Let me take a. What you can do is I learned this from people. I learned this from channels like Shango 066, channels like that. B Anderson TV. If you tap the CRT, the neck of the CRT lightly, just gently, you may see. I hope I'm not getting my fat head in the shot. Someone actually complained about that for the first time. No. So no shorts. And let's check the cutoff. 24 Yeah It's okay It's not as good as What my Foco predicted CRT tested The 17 DRP4 But it's there So we got cut off So, emissions, let's check the life on this, if the, okay it says, here, the, in the, it says here in the manual, if the pointer momentarily remains fixed or slightly increases then slowly drops to zero, the tube is acceptable. Yeah, it's, just, it's fixed there, at, off the charts. I can see just a tad of movement. It moved there a tad, but that was about it. So the CRT's got good life. Alright, there's the CRT. Wow. Alright, so I got it powered on. There's the neck of the CRT. It looks rather bright. I hope I didn't <laughs> over the freaking thing. That's not warm. Still got a nice bright image. And... There's our tubes. Neat little money shot here. Let's see if I can look at the uh the rectifier doesn't usually glow. 
All right, well, let's get in the house and let's hook up the signal to it. Let's uh, hook up the uh, Shaw TV box, Shaw cable box in the house. And um, I think we should get a good picture on it. We got a nice, nice raster so far. So, Something there. I can see the picture there, but it's bad roller this bad vertical roll. Alright, so turn the set back on. I had to uh, I never got that on my camera before. It gave me a little error message saying I had to recover my data and if I did try to recover it I might damage some of the data that I put on other devices to edit. Which the only does it oh. Okay. Now you decide to behave. I turned it off and turned it back on, now the vertical decides to behave. I can see clearly now the hell? The wow. That's a very... The image is very... That's the problem with the vertical linearity. If I turn it, I'm only stretching the image out. Okay, I'm going to try something here real quick. Oh. My focus is the hell. There you go. Let me try channel 3 and see if that makes a difference. Uh, so let me go to my video modulator. So channel 3. I didn't think so. Back to channel 4. Yeah, that's channel 4. And this is channel 209 on my cable box is a sports channel that there's nothing but this which I'm paying for but I'm, at least I'm paying for it to use it for something good right use it for use it to test these test these sets it's a lot of hum a lot of noise in the picture yeah let me get a small screwdriver and see if I can adjust the AGC and all the other controls in the back. Stand by. Okay. Let's see here. Try this one first of all. Alright, let's see.
Okay, well... It's not really... That's a little stretched out. So we got that, now the vertical size is a little... Images look a little stretched out. Guide. Okay, there's soccer. camera can see that. I think the picture is there but it's stretched. Okay. We'll find something that Oh wow. Okay, I have some contact cleaner. I'm going to try cleaning these pots and see if it makes a difference. We're cleaning these controls, if you will. There is quite a bit of dust in here. I'm going to be surprised that the vertical roll is because the vertical hold control is dirty. Horizontal one is fine. Okay, we'll see if that made a difference. It's hard to get inside the pots when it's got a circuit board in front of it like this. Okay, well I'm getting some 
Alright, well I'm getting somewhere with this a second here. Hard to see the picture on camera. But if I where's my video watch the air here? I switch it from in I think I'm in PAL now. Not sure. Okay, that's I believe NTSC. And that's PAL. So the face is still like a bit stretched out, but not as bad. And the vertical roll stops. I can't even adjust. What's weird though is when I... Yeah, that's the zenith on. Yeah, I'm in PAL. Because you can see the zenith. The picture's in black and white, and it's there's vertical roll. And that's the zenith. And if I go back to NTSC... See, that's NTSC on the video modulator. And there's PAL. And here's the Marconi. So... And it does look better. Let me go back to Windows Circle here. Shut the zenith off. Let me go to window circle. A second here. A bit better. If I turn the brightness down so you can see that. size doesn't want to do anything that's as good as I can get the vertical I think that's as good as it gets I mean, it's all the way. Not all the way, but that's full screen. It's that Westinghouse tube, if you focus on the back there, is a 6A W8A. This is a 8A W8A uh, original. These are all original tubes. This is the video slash video output slash sync separator, which I'm guessing was Which I'm gonna guess was the issue. I don't know if I can replace it with a 6A W8A. They look pra I put them side to side. They look practically the same. One's just a little shorter. I looked in the in the rider's substitute manual for tubes, vacuum tubes, that I have as a PDF file on my phone. It didn't say whether or not I could. It said for 6A W8, not 6A W8A, which I believe is a different tube. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try it. And fingers crossed I don't blow anything up. Let's see what happens. Alright, so let's try this. Oh, let me hook up the signal first. Whoop. Different video output. 
new video output tube slash uh, new but used not new old stock by the way from a predicta new slash used video output slash sync video sync new uh, video output slash sync separator tube in Let's see. Okay. It doesn't like the six A W. Doesn't like the six A W eight A. Okay, so that's the 6AW8A. No. It's giving me a weaker signal and I don't know why. No. Nope. Time to put the original back in. I think the heater voltage on the six on the eight A W eight A is slightly different than on the six A W eight A. That actually looks neat. Holding my finger there against the. I get my finger to focus on it. That's kind of a neat shot with me holding the tube in front of the TV like that. Um, I think with the 8A-W8A, there's a slightly different heater voltage than with the 6A-W8A. Right, back to this TV. Watch when I do this. Here. I'm not going to do it now, but during commercials, uh... I think it was an AT&T commercial and something else. Because uh, this is I'm on ABC, so it's an American channel. Um, the vertical started rolling, and when I would hit the vertical switch with my hand like that, it would stop. It's almost as if something's, as if something's loose in that pot, or there's a loose soldering joint on that pot inside the TV. I don't know why, but when I hit the vertical, see? I don't want to hit it too hard because I don't want to break the pot, but if I tap on it, Alright, so that's what we got. I got an NTSC rather than PAL, which I prefer. Because the picture is more stable. And you don't now you can you know, you might notice you don't see all the flickering on the camera, it's all easier to video the um So you can see the heads are still, you can see Biden's head is still all stretched out. It's squished at the top here and then it's stretched out here and then there's a rolling bar. So there definitely is a vertical issue. See the vertical I always like to roll on NTSC but it, it wasn't bad. I never wanted to roll on PAL. Uh, the reason that it rolls when it's in PAL, I actually don't know why. And actually it looks better now with the light off. That's NTSC and you see it shrinks because of the NTSC 16 by 9 widescreen. If I hit PAL, not much of a difference because this commercial is in 16 by 9.
see if it's shot and edited when, it's when they edit the commercials they always shrink the picture down for whatever reason I don't know the reason behind that not all commercials but mostly it seems like car commercials they do that let me go to so go back to the retro channel and I don't want to get copyrighted so I'll turn down the problem with the retro channels it's not all Vintage music videos like you think, it's some some of them are from the early 2000s, so they will be in 16x9, they won't all be in 4x3, or 4x6. I got so many damn channels on my subscription that I don't watch, I don't know when I have them. But it's good for test subject for videos like this. Okay, that's 4x3. It looks a little better. The vertical size needs to be adjusted. So if I want to watch 4x3, I have to put it in PAL. And that's 16x9. You can see it shrinks it. I don't know what the hell that's a picture of because the video is all whacked. Oh, it's... And then there's 16 by 9 full screen. So that's 16 by 9 full screen, not widescreen. That's another reason why it fills, why it fills, the screen. The reason why you get the two bars on the top and the bottom is because it's in 16 by 9 widescreen, which most programming is now. So you want to have those two black bars here. I know people like two resize it down so that they don't get those black bars, but you're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to look like that. That's, it's... The vertical linearity is set wrong when you oversize, when you cut off the, bl the black bars so that they're up here and you don't see them. You're supposed to be able to see it, and this one I can't because the vertical linearity is all stretched out. You can see sort of see it up there. I don't see it down there though because it's not. And if I adjust the vertical slightly it'll move up and then it'll, it'll lose control and it'll get vertical roll and which you're supposed to get with the vertical linearity control but you're also supposed to with these TVs you're also sometimes supposed to somewhat be able to move the picture up and down I'm supposed to be able to shrink the picture up and down with the vertical linearity, but if I touch the vertical linearity, it starts rolling. And the vertical size doesn't do nothing but make the screen jitter. So there's something wrong with those pots back there. Which might just be the issue. I tried cleaning them, but it didn't do anything. I tried cleaning the vertical pot up here. It's stable now. Well, it's the next morning, and I started fiddling with it a bit more. And it looks... It almost looks a little bit better, but that's the best I can. The circle's still stretched out. And the cross hatch is still squished up up here, but it's looking, it's looking better. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening, I'm Kate Snow in for Lester tonight. For days, Floridians have been bracing for Hurricane Elsa, the storm interfering with search efforts at the collapsed tower in Miami Dade. Tonight, reports of a likely tornado in Jacksonville. So I got it looking fairly good now. Still the heads are stretched out. But again, I uh, but I um, adjusted the AGC so the contrast wasn't so harsh. It's not such a dark contrast. And it's... Uh, what I didn't realize is the... Uh, something that seemed off to me about the signal for a while. It seemed very... The picture seemed very snowy. Well, because I had the, these things just pulled out there, they plug into the uh, antenna terminals and they were unplugged in behind the, behind the, in the chassis. And, um, I forgot to pull them out and plug them in, so, uh, stronger looking signal now. 
Channel 4. Focus needs to be adjusted a bit. So far, it looks pretty good. So far, so good. Anyways, that's enough of that. We'll get back to it in another video. We'll do a part two on fixing the vertical. I think that'll be. I think that'll be an interesting video. I haven't done a video on fixing the vertical on a TV before, but uh, I think I've done the horizontal. Or no, that was just a setup video for the Panasonic, but, uh, that TR, the TR-555, uh, that's a transistor set, of course, but, uh, it's kind of neat to have, you know, those of you who know me, I collect a lot of the portable transistor sets, and it's kind of neat to have a portable tube set, vacuum tube set, the only other vacuum tube TV I have is the Philco Predicta, and that's part of the reason why I bought this, I'm looking to widen my collection of vacuum tube TVs. I have a lot of vacuum tube radios, but not very many vacuum tube TVs. So, this is quite cool. And these are quite rare. And I love the Canadian made stuff. Not just because I'm Canadian, but some of it, some of it is just really cool. But, um, yeah. Neat set. Part 2 is coming soon. Stay tuned. More to come. Lots to come. Uh, yeah. 73s. And we'll see you in the next one.